it's very frustrating. It wasn't my car. Joe Thomas is talking about these copies of tickets, half a dozen. In the amount of $95. Joe, according to these violations, ran red lights six times. Those red light cameras that supposedly caught Joe Thomas breaking the law are located right here in East Cleveland, more than 130 miles from Thomas's home in Dublin. Have you ever been to East Cleveland? I've never been to the city of East Cleveland, no, I have not. Know nothing about it. Mm -mm. It's merely the tip of the iceberg. I got my hands on copies of these tickets. The vehicle that blew through these red lights in East Cleveland, according to these citations, is an 84 Chevy. Here it is, sitting in the storage garage in Columbus, waiting to be restored. It was my dad's car. Uh, when he passed away, uh, I inherited the car. Now, fix your eyes on this. The car these red light cameras caught isn't Joe's. It's this late model Ford Thunderbird. Have you ever owned a Ford Thunderbird? Never owned a Ford Thunderbird. Never. Never. Here's where this story gets really interesting. The plate captured on these red light cameras. Ford T-Bird, well, Joe acquired that same plate back in 2008. It expired in 2009, November. Still with me? Joe still has the expired plate on his car. Take a good, long look at it. You can clearly read Ford T-Bird. There's also an emblem to the left of the plate, an eagle over the U.S. flag. Now, take a good look at the plate on this Ford Thunderbird. The first letter or number on this plate is obstructed. Could it be an Ohio Fraternal Order of Police sticker you could buy online for just five bucks? Wow, that's close. In any case, this is not Joe's plate. Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles spokesperson, Lindsey Bohr. No one owns that plate right now. That's right, when Joe's plate expired, it wasn't reissued. I did some more digging. Could this be a one? One T-Bird came back to a black 56 Thunderbird. Maybe an A. A T-Bird came back to a 2002 Thunderbird. My biggest fear, however, is um, if this perpetrator runs a red light and, and hurts somebody or kills somebody, um, the city of East Cleveland is gonna be looking for me. Thomas says he called the city of East Cleveland. Didn't get any response. He says he also contacted ATS, the company that manages these red light cameras in East Cleveland and Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Both, says Joe, pointed the finger at one another. They told me that uh, it wasn't their problem. I contacted all three agencies, the city of East Cleveland, ATS, and Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles. As a result, Joe Thomas is a vindicated man. That's it. We'll issue a letter verifying the information that we have in our system that could hopefully help them remedy the situation with the ticketing agency. A spokesperson with ATS told me Joe's case is extremely rare. Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles agrees. This mystery, however, isn't solved. It's unclear just exactly where this plate came from and who's behind the wheel of this Ford Thunderbird. If you go too fast, you might miss this bright yellow sign warning you that the new speed limit on Interstate 70 between Livingston and Maine in Columbus is 55. I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. What was the speed limit before? Maybe it's down to 35 now. Is it 60? I'm not sure whether the, it's 70 or 65 here. It was 65, but a rash of semi-accidents over the last year and a half has prompted a change. The most recent wreck was Thursday. It would make people be more cautious about their uh, surroundings. Maybe. We hit the road to find out, but we were pretty sure we knew what we'd find. Here we are in the speed zone, and I'm trying to keep it right around 55. To be honest, it's kind of tough. You really do want to speed, but even at the speed limit, we are getting past left and right. Drivers we talked to tell us a lower speed limit is probably a good thing. They could even decrease it more, and I think it would even be better. Time to get dirty. See this white sticker on the window? 
Well, it means AZN Gourmet is on probation with the Columbus Public Health Department. White means probation. When I dropped by this Dublin restaurant to talk turkey, AZN quickly showed me the D-O-O-R. You work here? You shouldn't come here. Okay. Yeah, well, please. don't grab me, sir, whatever you yes, do. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Have somebody call me, if you don't mind. Sir, here. Well, let's go. That was interesting. Indeed. Asian Gourmet can duck me all they want, but they can't hide from the facts. Fact. Following an inspection that uncovered seven violations, some of them critical, the health department recently shut this place down. Violation. State law demands restaurants have at least one worker trained in food safety for each shift. On the day of the inspection, that wasn't the case here at AZN. Yikes. AZN was also written up for unsafe food temperatures. Oh my. Another serious violation? A can of Raid was spotted in the kitchen. Ugh, gag me. When it comes to killing bugs at restaurants, state law requires licensed pest control people do the dirty work. The violations were corrected and AZN reopened the following day. Now a few dirty dining, dirty little morsels. Peking Dynasty here on West 5th Avenue was recently written up after the inspector eyeballed dead roaches, I said dead roaches, in the food storage area. And here at O'Reilly's Pub on North High Street, a bartender makes an alarming confession to inspectors. Workers were placing garnishments like lemons and limes into customers' drinks with their bare hands. Disgusting. Inspectors told O'Reilly's Pub workers must wear gloves whenever handling food. Well, that's tonight's Dirty Dining. I'm ABC6 consumer investigator Tom Soucy. Bon appetit, everybody. The victim doesn't want us to identify her. She's still worried about what happened. I was scared um, when he told me that I had done something illegal, that he had my background information. The caller claimed to be with the FDA. He told her agents were en route to her house to arrest her because she bought the diet drug HCG online from a pharmacy he says they just raided in the Dominican Republic. Our victim tells me she did go on this site and buy the drug. And he had the DEA agent on the other line and I could hear the conversation between the two of them in which he was telling the DEA agent to suspend the arrest order. That is if she paid $2,000. And that's when she got suspicious. I called the number they gave her the first time I got this recording. Thank you for calling the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Department. So I tried again. Thank you for calling the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. This is Maria Durant with ABC6 and Fox 28 News. Hello? No one wanted to answer our questions. Upper Arlington police say it's a scam and they're investigating. I want to make the public aware that these professional scammers are getting very aggressive. And police say be careful of the sites you use when buying things online. In Columbus, I'm Maria Durant, Fox 28 News. Well, they're just blowing right through, man. You're watching state corrections officers. Seven in a row. Boldly ignoring stop signs at this busy intersection in Orient, just around the corner from the state prison. Oh. An anonymous tip brought us to the intersection of Stall Road and High Street. Over a period of four days, a few hours each day, we watched. What we observed was disturbing. Corrections bus just rolled right through that. State corrections officers pay to enforce the law, breaking the law right before your eyes. Didn't even try. Officers Bruce Brown and Roy Miller caught my eye. Brown is behind the wheel of this 2008 Dodge Charger. Three straight days, we caught Brown blowing through this stop sign. I followed him home to ask him why. Tom Susi, ABC6? Yes, sir. How's it going? I showed Brown video of him breaking the law. You recognize that car? Well, that's my car. It was not intentional. And... Do you know there's a four-way stop sign there? Yes, sir, I do. Well, why do you keep running it? Honestly, that was not my intention. I don't normally do that. What do you normally do? I normally stop. Not on this day, or this day, or this day. There's repercussions behind it. I have to accept the responsibilities as a man because I did break that, I did break that traffic. Code. 
I dug around some more. Turns out Bruce Brown has a habit of breaking the law. Here's a copy of Brown's driving record. According to the Department of Motor Vehicles, during the past 13 years, he's been ticketed seven times. Speeding, driving without a license, even impaired driving. Three times, Brown's license has been suspended. Hey, Roy Miller, how are you? Roy Miller's behind the wheel of this 2000 Chevy truck. Three days in a row, we caught him running the stop sign. We confronted Miller outside this business. Tom Susie, ABC 6 on your side? I showed him our video. You're paid to enforce the laws, but you're breaking the laws. Running that four-way stop sign more than once. <laughs> you got anything to say? No. Miller walked off. You got nothing better to do. We offered to show our video to the Department of Corrections. No thanks, they said. They also declined to be interviewed for this story. Now, where were you set up at? Pickaway County Sheriff Dwight Radcliffe is very interested in our investigation. We showed the sheriff some of our footage. He couldn't believe his eyes. That guy, he just smoking his cigarette and going right on through. Nobody's above the law, nobody's below the law. Everybody's expected to obey the law. Sheriff Radcliffe told me he doesn't have the resources to put a cruiser out here every day. Nonetheless, he says his deputies write their share of tickets at this corner. I don't know that anybody's going to get a free pass and run that stop sign. Sheriff Radcliffe says it's time the Department of Corrections lay down the law with these lawbreakers. I would strongly suggest that uh, this concern be carried up to Director Moore. Sheriff Radcliffe is referring to Gary Moore, the state's top prison boss. And I think he needs to try to get something done. Until then... You got nothing better to do. When it comes to obeying traffic laws at this intersection... Never stop. Never stop. Some of these corrections officers believe they just might be above the law. Magazines, toiletries, and sweet treats all packed up and headed to our soldiers overseas. <laughs> Gahanna Lincoln senior Brittany Coons knows the importance of these care packages. Her father, Sergeant First Class Anthony Paul McLaurin, has done four tours in the past six years. He keeps going over there by choice, not by force, so it just means a lot and it inspires me. We can set this box down in a box. Now she's inspired her fellow classmates to give back to the troops. She started the APN project, named after her dad, to provide special packages for troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. They even include letters to the soldiers. We really want them to know how much we appreciate them. For the past two months, the students have collected supplies, but now they've hit a roadblock. The supplies are just in boxes now. If they don't get to the soldiers, you know, the mission is not complete. I have candy and ramen noodles. The group has the supplies. What they don't have, the money to send all of these packages out. It'll probably be about 30, 40 each box. This is the one I've already done, right? With 400 pounds of supplies, that really adds up, but the students are determined. We've gone this far, and we, we really want to see this through. It'll mean a lot, and I'll be really excited, and I'm hoping that maybe some of the soldiers will write back. Now Brittany is hoping they get the donations to make her dream come true. Only our cameras are there, as the owner of the Sangria East Bar sweeps up broken glass, left behind after a gunman opens fire, wounding two men. I see him pull the gun, and he just kind of gun, gangster style went like this, and he just targeted two of the guys. Both the manager and owner have asked not to be identified because the trigger man remains on the loose. It's not right when people's coming shooting and all that stuff. Seconds before bullets flew in this bar, security asked the alleged gunman and his friends to leave after getting into an argument with some customers. Right before that shooter walked out the door, he started firing onto the dance floor. You just um, have a specific target here inside. Uh, apparently the people, the two guy, uh, gentlemen that were shot, they were arguing with him. Bloodstains mark the spot where the two customers were shot. One man was hit in the arm, the other wounded twice in the arm and the side. Both will be okay. It could have been worse, yes, could have been worse. Now sheriff detectives search for the gunman responsible for the shootout. 
on the dance floor. We're not going to move. We're not going to change. Uh, we're just going to continue going. In Truro Township, Steve Levine, ABC6 News.